I've got some of these done. Didn't want to bore you with the whole lot. But basically, <coughs> I got my pipe cutter and I've cut off the end so that this end goes in nice and snugly into here without hitting those little nipples there. So those little stoppers there are so that when you poke a pipe in there it stops and it doesn't fill in the hole. See, it's not going to block the T-joint in. So these were trimmed so that they don't block the T-joint in. Alright, now this surface has got a little minor little bit of a taper on it. So when these go in, they're a really tight fit to go in. I want them to go all the way, like that, so as far as I possibly can. But if I leave them, they slowly creep out. So I've got to wait a good 15 minutes without twisting or playing around with it um, once it's glued so for that glue to set nice and hard. I actually leave them in there a little bit longer than that, um, just to make sure that there's a nice strong bond. So what I've done is I've made a jig. Jig, 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 jiggity jig. This jig does two things. First thing it does is I can put these bits together and I can lock it down. So if I grab one of these, it's already prepared. Locks it down in a place so it keeps this end tight into the T-joint and it doesn't creep out because of the taper until it's nice and set and whip it out. The other thing that this um, jig does is when I join two of these parts together I use it to do exactly the same thing and it also means that I'm getting these lengths exactly the same length and because these two bits can twist let's take an example here you can get it so that they're not parallel with each other so by putting it in the jig when I squeeze them in together I won't squeeze these ones in because I'm glue them I won't be able to get them out but they're on a flat surface, so that means I can push them down properly and they'll be parallel. Okay? So that jig is really handy. Easy as to make. Just a lump of wood. Make one, put it in, and screw in a stopper. It's done. And you can just repeat and keep on making them. But anyway, let's get on with these. Now you've got to sand the inside and the outside of these so that they're roughened up so they make a good bond, but more so it gets rid of any grease. You know, as I'm touching it with my fingers, the grease in my fingers is going to be getting on the plastic and that will affect the glue bond. So by giving it a sand, we get rid of that grease. Now I sand round things like this. I put sandpaper in my hand, put it in, I find oh, something to screw in the end. So they've got a bit of leverage and twist it to sand. Done. And then unscrew it and take it off. One done. For the inside, I use a smaller bit of sandpaper. And same thing, I twist the object instead of the sandpaper and I'm sanding. Because I just need to rough it up, just take that gloss off the surface of the pipe and get rid of any, any dirt or any grease that's on there. Ready to put the two together. Alright, get rid of the dust. Now this stuff, <clears throat> as I said, it's toxic. Okay, it is pretty toxic. It says poison on it, so you don't want to breathe in the vapors or anything like that. So make sure you're in a well ventilated area. Where I'm gluing gets nowhere near the beer. I only have water that's going to be running through this pipe that will come in contact uh, with any leftover residue of this um, glue. I'm going to glue both ends, and I'm gluing in the opposite direction to. I'm applying the glue in the opposite direction to where to the way I sanded. I don't know why, it just says that on the container. Makes for a better bond. Alright, 
put it in, squeeze it in as far as I can, and push. There we go. Springing up just a little bit. So that's going to hold it in place until it sets. Now if I quickly sort of whip it out, I'll show you what it's going to do. See? It pops out. So that's the reason for having the jig. So I can hold it in place while that glue sets. Okay, the next bit we're doing is joining some ends together. So putting a little joining piece in between so that we've got flow coming in and flow coming out. So we're going to make six of these in total. Now the distance between here and here is a specific distance. And I'll show you what it is. Here's one with, with a couple of um, compression fittings in it. And what you want to test is you want to test your radius of your pipe. Ta-da! Okay, it's starting to look a little bit kinky. But if you had a tighter radius, i.e. something like that, you get a kink in your pipe and it stops the flow. Worse than stopping the flow, it creates a little bit of a vacuum suction and it could possibly suck in some air. Now we all know when you sort of squeeze a pipe, um, you manage to miraculously create air bubbles from somewhere along the pipeline. So you want to try and avoid kinks. So that is why this is this wide. So that the pipe that I'm using, the silicon tube that I'm using, can bend in an arc without getting a kink in it. So that's the thing to test to make sure that you're not going to put a kink in your little pipes. Now, I've chosen um, clear silicon tube at this stage, or opaque silicon tube, because then I'll be able to see the beer flow through. And when I empty it out, I should be able to see the beer empty out as well and know that the counter flow is totally empty of beer and I haven't wasted any. Um, but you could use any type of pipe um, that you want there, as long as it's a pipe that you can easily use and it's food grade, etc. And it can bend. All right. So, that distance is, got some pre-cut pipe, I have 90mm pipe, and this 90mm pipe is going to go inside of this socket, and the socket depth, remember, there's these little lugs in here where the pipe is meant to push all the way in until it finishes, that depth is 20mm, well actually 19mm. So that's a 19mm depth inside there. So I've taken that into account with my pipe. Let me have a look at it on here. So my pipe is long enough, I've cut my pipe long enough that when I squeeze the two T-joints together, they hit those little nipples and it's a nice solid joint. So measure up all your little bits and pieces first and get them all cut. So there they are. Okay, let's make some of these. As I said, I've got a jig for putting them together. So let's grab two and a pipe and sand them. All right, here's our favorite glue. Okay, make sure you get your ends pointing the same way. There's no point doing that, because then you'll have a zigzag. So you want to make sure that your ends are pointing the same way when you put it all together. And you want to do both ends at the same time, because we're going to be jamming the pipe together. So I need to try and get this done quite fast, so that the glue doesn't start to set. Oh, you doggy. Squish. Squish. Now remember, both ends at the same end. Try and squeeze it together. Now the reason we have the jig. There we go, it's lots in there. Is to make sure that they're parallel. Okay? you've got two twisty things that you can put on you could have one T straight and the other T crooked like that and it's not going to work so by having the jig you've got something solid and firm that you can push down on 
and it's going to hold it in place while it sits. There's another one done. I'll wait for that to sit. There's a couple of little bits of glue left over, but we can easily tidy that up. Um, wait for that to sit, and we've got three more to go. Alrighty, so we have six of these. And we have some pipe that we're going to use to connect in, which makes our runs. Now, the length of this pipe, can't really get it in the camera shot, but the length of the pipe is totally up to you. The longer, the better. The reason mine is that long is so that when I put it on the wall, bear in mind the silicon pipe that's going to come out, um, when I fit it on the wall, there's enough room for that silicon pipe. So that's my only length limitation. When you're cutting your pipes and you decide on the length that you need, give an extra 200 mil for your copper pipe. Now the reason you need that 200 mil is that you have two end caps that are going to be going on. So make sure you don't cut. Your pipe's too short that they don't stick out the end of the compression fitting. Here's the layout for the counter flow. Um, just trying to work out the best configuration. This is the normal configuration, but I might actually uh, change it because I want to be able to add to this later on. So let's have a look. Alright, I've got two of the pieces glued and put together. And I have my third piece that I've just got in a sash clamp. Now, if you have access to a sash clamp, they're perfect because you can tighten up the end and you can force the pipe into its end housing. And you can also put a ruler on it and keep on tightening it until they all get to the same length. So then uh, you know everything's all going to be plumb and square when you put it together. Okay, an update. I have stuck all the PVC pipe together. So everything's been stuck together now. So all the PVC gluing is done. Thank God for that. Stuff was getting smelly. Okay, dokey. I went for a different configuration than the zigzag configuration. Um, I actually went for a pyramid type of configuration. If we can see in here, as we look down, can we see down and see the other ends? The other ends go in the opposite direction than this end. So I'm creating a triangle type flow all the way up. Um, the reason I did that is I don't have to go as high because I have two levels of pipes um, and it just looks a little bit different. Now I went with a bit of uh, timber in the middle. Um, this bit of timber in the middle carefully positioned the pipes so that the pipes were at the same angle. So the natural angle as I bent them, um, the distance between the bottom of the pipe clamp and the bottom of the next pipe clamp was 70 mils. So this is a 70 mil bit of finished timber. Um, so it's nice and true. And that meant as I screwed these all in, I could just measure up as I went and screw each one into place and angle the bottom ones and everything all lined up nice and perfectly. And it's all nice and parallel. 